bald in the Central Committee. Let's cringe in the Central Committee. Let's bog in the Central Committee right now. I have no obligation to return to me any profit. I would never invest in a co-op. Why would you invest in you, you invest in, in businesses in the United States? Correct. Hoping, because businesses example, let me finish. Hoping, for example, for something called a capital gain. Mm -hmm. You hope that if you buy the shares and if the company does real well, you will be able to sell the shares at some future point to another investor at a higher price. Correct. If that company's growth is the product of its worker co-op organization, you're perfectly happy if you can make an investment that grows over time. But in your world, you, those I shares don't exist. Example. First and of all, those... there exist where uh, these kinds of enterprises exist in the world. So this is not a high. This is actually a good point. You could also have it where there is private shares available, but the workers own the majority. Right. This is something that I didn't even consider, but this is absolutely a good point that Wolf was making, which is you could have the workers own controlling interest in the company, but they sell some share of the profits to private people or retirees or some other group. Right. But the control is maintained by the people in the enterprise. So they are in control of themselves. So you could still even have a capital market with the same with shares and shit, just preventing control from ever going to the capitalist class. Hypothetical. Then they're not then they're not worker co-ops by definition. Sure a worker. Co OK, tell me I, my definition might be incorrect. So you can correct me. My understanding is that what makes something a worker co-op or what makes something employee owned is that the means of production or whatever firm you operate at is wholly owned and operated by the workers, meaning that when profits are generated by that company, they're returned to the workers. And when decisions are made about that company, those decisions are made by the workers. If that is the. Definition OK, so there is. OK, that's a That's a very coherent definition of a type of worker co-op. You could have worker co-ops like what Destiny just said, or you could have worker-owned enterprises, which are slightly different than that. That I mean, maybe Wolf would accept worker-owned enterprises and would only accept cooperatives. I don't know his opinion, so I want to see what he says. Going by, there is no room for private investment there. Right, but that's the wrong definition and not okay. the one that operates in the world. Give me your the definition. definition of a worker co-op is that the workers make the key decisions. They are their own board of directors. They may make the decision democratically to raise capital for their business by selling shares. Of course they could do that. Those shares would not allow the people who own them to do the steps that they can in capitalism. They would not, for example, be able to dictate who's the board of directors because the workers themselves are their own board of directors. But there's no problem with private investment there never was. And my question is, most, why the first, example, well, no, no, no I don't need an example. Successful. No example. We we have the we have this definition. Okay, I just want to hone in on this definition. Okay, my question is, is, why would any individual ever invest in a company that doesn't have a fiduciary responsibility to their investors? So, for instance, in your world, that's not what Wolf said. Wolf didn't say you could screw over the people that invested. He just said you couldn't have control. This is a weaselly move. He didn't say that, ah, you take the money and then you fuck over the people that invested. He just said they would get no control. In fact, we have that in capitalism now. This is actually embarrassing, but I'll explain it. There's something known as preferred shares, okay? They're often known as class A shares. Here, we'll go to Investopedia. Class A shares refer to a classification of common stock that was traditionally accompanied by more voting rights than class B shares. In any case, the share class with the most voting rights is typically reserved for the company's management team. So right now we have people who own shares in companies and they get no voting rights or very little voting rights. And we have a, a class of super shares held by some other people who get more votes, AKA more control. And what Wolf is saying is don't allow capitalists to have voting rights in companies. Allow the workers to manage themselves. Don't allow everything to be directed in society by a few. Destiny is working from a place of thinking where if I don't control you, you will screw me over. Without market relations, you will fuck me. This is what liberalism does to your brain. Well, I mean, just because they don't have voting control doesn't mean they don't have fiduciary responsibility. That's not what fiduciary means. Buy 20% of a co-op 
their workers tomorrow could say, you know what? As an all... actuarial honor student, I'm honestly shocked by your vast econ knowledge. Most people who talk politics know very little about econ on left, right, or center. I mean, I did go to law school and do securities arbitration, you know? So I know a little bit about it. I also actually took Econ 101. It seems like when these debate lords go up against someone, there's obviously much more intelligent, coherent than there. They go into the tact of asking one to define things so that they, instead of re refuting the other's assertion that uh, they can uh, Karthik their definition. I have no idea what that means, which is what right wingers do all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're just constantly doing this pedantic argument about definitions, you don't have to actually deal with what Wolf is advocating for, right? Also, uh, read the news. Many companies have no responsibility to pay stockholders anything. Exactly. It's just a, a speculative instrument. Doesn't he get that the employees being the shareholders means the co whole company more responsible for keeping itself profitable? But profitable in the long run, Nucleus, right? So there's short-term and long-term profits. Here's why Wolf system might be more stable. You know, if I'm 40 years old and I work at a company and I own part of it, I want that company to exist in 30 years. So I'm gonna spend more money on research and development. I'm gonna spend more money on capital investment. I'm gonna wanna make my job easier. So I'm gonna wanna integrate new improvements in management, new improvements in, in technique, management and processes. You know, like we're gonna wanna integrate those things because it's gonna make my job easier and more profitable and i will be incentivized to keep the company going for longer right whereas with capitalists they might do things like i don't know load up a bunch of debt make risky gambles and if the company fails they eject out of it who gives a fuck they don't care and they're t they're focused on short-term profits so maybe they'll cut back on the employees they'll cut back on the r d budget they'll cut back on capital investment and just you know run the factories into the ground making as much so the profit goes up in that specific short-term quarter but over the long run the company becomes less competitive these are just things that you could bring up we're all bored. We don't want to do this anymore. We're going to move on. We're shutting the business down. And now I've just completely lost out on my investment because they have no responsibility to me because I have non-controlling shares. If the only shares you're selling are non-controlling, why would any private investment ever come in knowing that that co-op... Just because it's non-controlling doesn't mean you don't get a share of the profits. Do you? Why do you care about control so much? I thought you only cared about profits. Oh, you want to be able to fuck the workers over to make more profits. Ah, you want to increase the exploitation of the workers so you can make more profits, see? If the workers aren't getting their share of the output, they're just getting the way, the bare minimum for their subsistence, you can get more profits. That's why you want the control. And that's what capitalists are about. It's not that they want to make profit, it's that they want to squeeze as much as they can out of the people that actually do the work. Do you see why that's bad? never has an obligation to make a profit or return a dividend to the investors. There's many companies I'm listed on the stock exchange right now that pay no dividends to their investors here in the United States. It's a normal part no, of our stock. No, company. absolutely not. They what? Absolutely not? What? <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm sorry for reacting the way I was reacting. Many companies pay absolute no dividend at all. Might not pay a, about? You're, I'm talking about capital markets 101. They might not pay a dividend, then but they're you're badly misinformed. I, am most, not bad. I promise most. you the foundation of the stock market in the United States is a returning of capital to the people that are the ones doing the investment in companies. Now, it might be the case as you not correctly point out. He's going to say stock buybacks are returning capital, isn't he? Stock buybacks take shares out of circulation. They reduce a company's balance sheet to reduce the float. And they give that money to people that are disinvesting from the company. So you make the company financially less secure in order to decrease the float of the business. So that existing shareholders will own more of the company. And it also helps with uh, EPS, which is earnings per share which is a specific accounting number, right? So like if you reduce the number of shares, that increases the earnings per share. But it doesn't actually return capital to investors. It returns capital to people that are disinvesting. And it does so by hurting the company. Oh. Now, it might, it absolutely. It might no, be the case. Really, really, you're just, yeah, really. you're unaware. You're, you're, most you're, no, of the, you're, no. most of the most dynamic companies in this country are selling stock to people to whom they have no responsibility, legal or otherwise, to give them a dividend ever. Okay, Professor, do you believe that a dividend is the only way that you can return capital to shareholders? That's not the point. That absolutely the, is the point. You made No, you made the point, what is the company responsible for? The company is responsible to run the company. 
The company's yeah. also not responsible to buy back shares. There's no responsibility of the company to buy back shares or return a dividend. In fact, the company could decide to dilute the shareholders by selling more shares. There is no responsibility that the company has to the current shareholders. They could declare bankruptcy and wipe out all the shareholders completely. Now, oftentimes the companies do do things like pay dividends or pay uh, shares because the management owns shares, right? Or they own options, call options. So management is paid. Ex senior executives are paid in call options. What's a call option? A call option is the right to buy a security at a certain price, right? So for example, say I'm CEO of Central Committee Productions. And uh, you know the, the board of directors pays me. They give me a hundred uh, uh, call options at Central Committee Productions at a hundred dollar strike price. So if the price of Central Committee shares goes to a hundred dollars, I have the right to buy a hundred shares of Central Committee Productions at a hundred dollars a share, right? So my incentive as the executive is to try to push that stock price up as high as I can in the short term, because the moment it goes above $100 a share, I can exercise those options and sell them on the market. I can buy those $100 a share of Central Committee Productions and I can turn around and sell it at 105. And so, boom, I just made money personally. So that might be a reason why I want the shares to go up. But as far as responsibility, if I'm getting paid no equity and I'm just getting a salary, I don't have to concern myself with the up and down fluctuations of the stock. My only concern is, will I get fired by the board of directors who are elected by the shareholders usually? But again, we talked about this earlier. We could have a special class of shares that has 100 votes to one. And those class A shareholders could elect whoever the fuck they wanted. Doesn't have to be. And if they're happy with what I'm doing with the company, I keep my job. And the class B shareholders could get fucked. They don't like what I'm doing with the company? Too bad. Sell your stock. But I don't, have a I don't have a responsibility to buy back shares. I don't have a responsibility to pay dividends. I don't have a responsibility to care what they say. I only get to keep my job if the people with the control of the company, the board of directors, decides to keep me in my job. There is no rule that says I have to do anything with the stock price. This is Capital Markets 101. They're not responsible to give money back, whether it's dividend, return of capital, or any other way to the people who give them the money to buy shares. It, the absolutely. people who give them the money are gambling. They hope that they can sell the shares for more, and they will sell the shares to anybody who can buy them. The company is not responsible to buy those shares. The company is not responsible for what price, price they can get. If they exactly. lose their shirt, tough luck. It's not an obligation or a responsible. That's the way the law of this country works for the stock market. And there's no problem in a worker co-op saying to investors, we're going to grow better than what you can get from a capitalist enterprise. So buying a share of our stock will give you a better shot to sell it at a higher price later. And I can give you examples. I'm Wait, I don't, do I don't want examples. No, 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 no. No, let, no, no. Let, no, no. I, we don't need examples. I'm give well, you Jesse example. was just totally and profoundly wrong on a basic level of understanding. How are you putting your hand in your face? You were profoundly wrong about a basic fact. And yet... Professor Wolf had to just explain to your audience that you were totally wrong and correct you. And you didn't say that he was wrong. You put your hand in your face and said, don't give me an example. Do, do Destiny's fans think he won? I mean, he just got destroyed. I, I mean, I don't think they do. I think that Destiny subreddit is not a good example because they delete anybody that criticizes him. So you get banned if you criticize Destiny in his dis subreddit. So I don't think that whatever posts are up there are evidence of anything. Answer yourself to answer to ask to answer this question. Does Mar Marjorie Taylor agree and think she's right? Yes, she does. Good point. A lot of them said Wolf was too long-winded because that's what Destiny was complaining about. So they just have a parasocial relationship where they just see whatever Destiny says and repeat it embarrassing example of a company that did that just so you can see why an investor would do it i mean really you can make the theater of your hand and on your face i'm not making the problem is you're just you said something that's just so on its face absurdly incorrect about the characterization of u.s capital markets you what
Wolf just said the reality of capital markets. A company has no obligation to make the stock price go higher. The company has no obligation to buy back shares. The company has no obligation to provide dividends. Oftentimes, the executives are incentivized to do so because they want to have their options, expi uh, don't want their options to expire worthless. They want to be able to make money themselves through owning equity. So they drive, they focus on driving the stock price up, but that's not a rule of the law. <laughs> What is he talking about? I'm putting my hand in my face because Destiny is embarrassing. This reminds me, I had a debate with Destiny and I talked about how you don't need to sell your shares. Like Jeff Bezos can pay basically no taxes on all the capital, all the billions he's made. He could pay no taxes on them because until he sells his shares, those are not a realized capital gain. So he just becomes $200 billion in tax-free wealth. And what people with 200 billions of dollars of tax-free wealth do is they borrow money from banks against their shares. And by the way, when they borrow that money, it's tax-free borrowing. You don't pay taxes on borrowed money. And many times, depending on what you borrow the money for, you can get a tax deduction on the interest that you pay back to the bank. So you can make billions of dollars in wealth, never pay any taxes, and you can live a luxurious lifestyle by borrowing against it. And he said I was wrong, and I was like, what? You could easily borrow against your fucking equities and your assets. And he like screeched that I was wrong. And I was like, this is basic. So I know exactly what Wolf is going through. Absolutely pathetic, basic lack of understanding of even the most normal functionings of, of society. Absolutely clueless. Do you not agree that there exists a legally binding, the SEC literally regulates fiduciary responsibilities to investors? I don't like this trick. Okay, so the fiduciary responsibilities involve things they can't do, but it doesn't obligate the stock to go higher. They can't do things like oppress minority investors. They can't do things that will hurt the shareholders. They can't lie to investors in their disclosures. There's rules about what companies can and cannot do, but there is no fiduciary responsibility to make the stock go higher because companies ha don't have control over that. You've pulled. Has nothing to, no, 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 no. Let me finish, please. Let me finish. You, let me finish. Let me finish. You've made it sound as though I believe the only way to return capital to shareholders is through dividends. That's absolutely not the case. That's no, one reading of that. it. You can return it via stock buybacks. You can return it uh, via right. increase but in growth. You're not of obligated companies. to do any of that. You're you're not obligated you to have do a any fiduciary of that. responsibility to your shareholders. Of course you, you do. If you read, if you take my advice, I teach these courses. If you read what fiduciary responsibility means, it's an abstract generalization. It can be easily demonstrated in thousands of legal cases that there is no obligation of any material sort that they return money to the people who invest in them. It this is, is like the student who got a question wrong on the test arguing with the teacher. Dude, it's right in your homework. Dude, it's right here on page 45. It's like a bacteria arguing with God. I mean, it's embarrassing. And I mean this with, with without any condescension. It's gonna sound bad, but I, I don't mean it as condescending. Destiny, please go back to school. I, I think you're kind of someone who's interested in learning. I think a structured environment would be really good for you, where you had accountability and you needed to learn things. And like you were forced to read books and maybe there was like a structure and there was someone that you respected that would teach you because you don't know enough to be arguing with Professor Wolf about this stuff. I think going and taking an Econ 101 and taking a macroeconomics course, maybe taking a course on capital markets and financial markets, I think that would actually be good for you. I, I think you learning some of the basics would encourage you to, I don't know, expand your thinking because it's very, very cringe that I'm watching a debate with a Harvard educated economics professor and you're arguing stuff about fiduciary duty, which you don't understand. Being a streamer in an environment where he's constantly agreed with by his audience has not done D any favors for rational thinking. I think it's actually like and i don't this is not me trying to insult him i don't know everything i get things wrong from time to time it's okay but my god the arrogance is unbelievable i mean when you when you invest in a stock when you go to a financial advisor they say past returns are no promise of future returns they're not permitted to say you invest in the stock the stock will go up it, the fiduciary responsibility of these companies is not to make stock go up or to return money they can't, for example, if Apple decided to just keep billions of dollars of cash on their balance sheet and not invest it, just have cash, 
and never invest it and never buy stocks back and never pay a dividend. That's legal. They could just keep it. They don't have to do shit. Oh, for example, Apple has 191.83 billion in cash. They could pay a dividend. They could do whatever the fuck they want. They don't have to do shit. Now they just, they could decide to do it if they wanted, or they could decide not to. That's not a violation of their fiduciary duty. Okay, to run your business as you think it should best be done, short of a committing fraud or illegal activity, and that would apply in any system, the investor is taking a chance buying your shares in the hopes of selling them at a higher price. It happens all the time, and it would be perfectly consistent with workers who run their Apple started own paying dividends recently. Yes, Jebson, that's right. They did. Because they had so much cash. Own board of directors. That's not a problem. Never was. There's nothing in Somebody says Dodge versus Ford they Motor Company. Plain of shareholders Dodge et al. brought an action against defendant corporation Ford Motor Company to force defendant to pay a more substantial dividend and to change questionable business decisions by defendant. The purpose of a corporation is to make profit for the shareholders, but a court will not interfere with decisions that come under the business judgment of directors. The Fed Corporation was the dominant manufacturer of cars when this case was initiated. At one point, the cars were sold for $900, but the price had been slowly lowered to $440. And finally, defendant lowered the price to 360. The defendant corporation, Henry Ford, admitted that the price negatively impacted short-term profits. But Ford defends his decision altruistically, saying that his ambition is to spread the benefits of the industrial society with as many people as possible. Further, he contends that he has paid out substantial dividends to shareholders, ensuring that they have made a considerable profit and should be happy with whatever return they get from this point forward. Instead of using the money to pay dividends, Ford's decided to put the money into expanded corporation. The issue is whether plaintiff shareholders could force defendant to increase the cost of production and limit the money invested into expansion in order to pay a larger dividend. Plaintiffs are held to a more equitable sized, but the court will not interfere on defendants' business judgments regarding the price set on manufactured products or the decision to expand the business. Notably, Ford did not deny itself a large salary for his position with the company in order to achieve his ambitions. However, the court will not question whether the company is better off with a higher price for vehicle or if the expansion is wise because the decisions are covered under the business judgment rule. So, like, that's business judgment. You don't have to do shit. You can't commit fraud. You can't oppress minority shareholders. You can't have uh, lies or mis uh, misstatements in your public fi uh, your filings. But you don't have to pay a dividend or buy a stock back. With private investment on the one hand and worker co-ops on the other. Now, if you have a worker co-op system, they might decide, because we have democracy now, that they don't want that, that they would like to be the owners as well right, hold as on, the Chad. board I need of directors water. of their own enterprise. That's possible. That would be one of the variations of worker co-op economic systems, just like we have variations of capitalist systems. Early Can I ask you, if, so in, in a private business in the United States, if I invest my money in a business, a publicly traded business, if they were to cash out all of that money, just close the business down and run, you're telling me that in the United States, that company wouldn't be held liable for scamming its investors? Absolutely. If that company had a good lawyer and showed that they made an honest effort to have a business and then it didn't work out and they closed it down, the investor would have absolute wow. standing. Exactly. You're right. But you, you used a word there, an honest effort, and it's doing all the heavy lifting in that statement. Of course, you absolutely must show a court that you are making a good, this is part of your fiduciary responsibility. You are making a good faith effort to yeah, that's return money. To that's what the worker co-ops could easily do. We're making a good faith, honest effort to make a business. And that business requires us to do X, Y, and Z. And the private investor got nothing to do. That happens every day in the United States. That's not what a worker co-op's maximizing for, though. A worker co-op, if by your definition, which is a democratically voted uh, organization, is going to be trying to take into account what their members are voting for. They might not vote in the best interest of a shareholder. They might vote to do no, something completely different. That, that would be understood the by the shareholder. But then, but that's by my the way, only, only the most naive shareholder in the United States believes that the company's decisions are intended to do the best for the shareholder. I can show you 50,000 legal cases in which that's not the case and which it, it is contested in the courts. And you could have that in a, in a worker co-op. That's great. And I, can show you the, and I can show you the Dow Jones. What the fuck is Destiny even arguing with? What a stupid fuckhead! <laughs> He's stupid, man.
I think he doesn't believe the business judgment rules because he doesn't know any better. Also, really good moderation from Lance. I just want to compliment Lance and say thank you, Lance, for p putting a, uh, a, a, a JPEG and the bottom center of your screen of a photo you took of yourself and then going and like going and watching a movie or something. Good moderation. I just want to say hats off to Lance. The NASDAQ and the S&P 500. We could go to the UK and look at the FTSE 250, the FTSE 1, and I can show you histories of markets where companies do reliably over long periods of time return profits, whether in the form of dividends or the increase in your share price to people that invest in those companies. I'm sure you can show me a lot of things that happen. That but that has nothing to do with the co-op system. You could have the same stock market, but all the firms be owned by the workers and controlled by the workers. And the same thing would happen if productivity was increasing. If economic output was growing, you would have the same thing if every single firm was controlled by the workers of that firm. This has absolutely nothing to do with what Wolf said. Would you recommend Wolf as a good educator? Yes, absolutely. I love Wolf. He's great. That are bad in capital markets where companies uh, scam people much as I can show you bad things that happen like famines under the USSR. But pointing out to a famines bad happened under the United States. Famines happened uh, by the uh, under the British. Have you never? I mean, like the Irish potato famine. What what society? What what a kind of economy Mike, happened? You're hitting your stride. It's a pleasure to watch. So I have a serious question for you. What type of economic system was the Irish potato famine? What was the fa the Bengal famine? What economic system? What was the Dust Bowl? Like, I, I, famines happen. Famines are happening now in Yemen. What economic system caused the famine in Yemen? There's famines that have happened in Sub-Saharan Africa after the fall of the Berlin Wall, like in Somalia. What economic system caused that? This is like actually embarrassing, dumb, and stupid. Actors does not clear up the problem of the fact that investing well, we're in co-ops, workers not talking have no about, obligation to return No, no, we're not talking about bad actors. You're inventing these things. We were talking about private investment and worker co-ops. You had made a statement that these somehow couldn't coexist. I'm explaining to you that there's not the slightest problem. You want to change the topic, that's very nice. But that's what the topic was. We weren't comparing goods and bad stories. We were explaining how and why private investment is not an either or in relationship wow. to worker co-ops. The One of the fastest growing industries in Spain is something called the Mondragon Cooperative Corporation. It's a family of worker co-ops. It is now the seventh. Worker it's managed, though. I don't know. Finished. This isn't even a good. It is. It is. It is the seventh largest corporation in Spain. It it's started a federation six of corporations. Or, excuse me. It's, it's a, a federation, federation of, corporations. of corporations, and it's not even worker managed. It, That's just worker called, owned, and they have all the same exploitative problems. They go to South America for labor. They rely on contract labor. Chomsky's criticized the Mondragon thing for existing in a capitalist framework forever. And even if this so, this is this is actually how these dipshits operate, which is this could never work. Well, here's it working really well. Well, here's some objections with that specific corporation's practices that make it not pure socialism. Therefore, it doesn't count. Also, by the way, the only thing Lance has said so far is to just repeat what Destiny just said. <clears throat> just, just noting that. Some of those federation is worker managed. Some of them have uh, more traditional management structures, but they're still owned and operate for the benefit of the workers who owe, who, of the workers of the corporation. I mean, like, do you think we would not allow, a, a, you know, pluralism and work and management styles under Wolf's regime? I'm sure he would. Although, pausing it and saying, just a lot of Destiny not listening, completely not understanding things. Yeah. This was your go-to killer example. The Mondragon Federation of Co-ops exists under a capitalist framework. Could I finish so or do you need to tell me? Why, but why does that matter? Doesn't it existing under a capitalist framework mean that it's even more robust than Destiny says? We don't need to do a worldwide revolution first. We can start doing it now. Doesn't that mean it's an even better idea? How is that even a good debate point? Like, how does this even make sense? About the Mondragon Corporation. I, I didn't mean to interrupt your lecture. I'm sorry. Continue. Sure you did. Come on. Uh, who you think you're kidding? <laughs> the Mondragon Corporation has many parts. The biggest single part of it are a collection 
Everyone of worker co-ops. About Mike if this were the United States, we'd call it a holding company, you, which is a collection of subsidiaries that do a variety of things. It's very common in the United States, and it's very common in the world of worker co-ops to do that as well. The different divisions help each other. The co-ops support one another. That's how the Mondragon Corporation went That's from six bad. people in 1956 to over 100,000 now. Most of the people in the Mondragon Corporation function within their members, about 200 companies, each of which has workers, one person, one vote, making democratic decisions. This company has been extraordinarily successful. It has outcompeted its capitalist uh, competitors. That's how it became so large. That's how it becomes so successful as it has been. It has rules. It maximizes, because you raised that before, a variety of objectives. It is not focused exclusively on profits. The notion that profit is the bottom line is the very convenient economic nonsense because profits go into the hands of the capitalists at the top. And of course, they want the company to maximize profits because that's what they get. They don't maximize wages because that's what they don't get. Other people get that. If the other people ran the business, its objectives would not just be profit, but the well-being of those workers, the community's well-being, a whole lot of other objectives to maximize. And you'd have to choose among them. You wouldn't have the essential profit maximizing, which we teach in economics without explaining to our students that by maximizing profit, the whole company's life is devoted to maximizing the return of a very small number of people within it. Okay, this is what has changed in a worker co-op. That's why it's so different from capitalism. It's decisions, investment, growth, distribution of income, all the big decisions would be made with a different set of objectives because a different set of people with different interests are making those decisions. For a society like ours that blabbers Incredible. on about democracy, you'd think this was the most attractive possible way to proceed because it democratizes the economy by democratizing the enterprises at the core of that uh, economy. Instead, we live in a society which pretends that you can have political democracy, even though in economics you have an autocracy, a tiny aristocracy running each enterprise, doing what it wants, maximizing the part of the output it gets, namely the profit. And therefore, we get surprised that our political democracy doesn't work real well. Hello, that's because it's trying to sit on top of an economic system that is the opposite of democratic. The proposal of socialists is a proposal to extend democracy from the political realm to the economic realm. Why that is frightening to people who otherwise say they favor democracy, I find amazing. I find it equally amazing that the I mean, there you go, chat. He talked about what the problem with capitalist structure was, is it, it tries to maximize profit for the capitalists, which necessarily means maximizing exploitation of workers, maximizing exploitation of the environment, maximizing exploitation of a community, maximizing exploitation of states. That is what the corporation is doing because it doesn't care about any of those other things. It only cares about the profit. So anything it can do to exploit those other factors, it does. It doesn't care about the other interests. And also that's why when it's unregulated, it destroys the society it's in. That's why Keynesianism and social democracies and Nordic countries are more successful because they control and grab and regulate and strangle those market forces and divert a large sections of the economic activity to other purposes. That's why they're successful. That's why they develop better. Because they don't let the capitalist snake wrap its tail around everyone's neck. And what Wolf is saying is, if we transition more of the economy to worker control, where more 
important objectives might be considered, we'll get even better outcomes. Now, if your goal is, if you just take the snapshot of profit for the capitalist class, of course co cooperatives do worse than, than non-cooperatives because that's not their only goal. What are tw these credentials? He's a, uh, he is a music, he went to music school and he dropped out, I think as a freshman or a sophomore. He spent some time as a professional carpet cleaner then I think he worked as some sort of, like, dealer at a casino. Then he uh, dabbled in StarCraft as a semi-pro semi in StarCraft, but I don't think he had any substantial tournament victories or anything like that. And he kind of fell into streaming, I think, like, 10, 12 years ago. And he's kind of been one of the first people that just continually kept streaming for the past 10 years. So um, he is, you know, pretty large uh relatively in, in the streaming space so i think that's i think overall that would be his his credentials i think it would be fair to describe him as an autodidact um somebody who reads a lot of of short articles and listens to videos online sign of self-educated and he really made his bones in the political sphere by debating gamer john tron john tron uh, I believe he had a show on YouTube called Game Grumps and Game Grumps guy argued for some sort of white supremacist talking points and he out debated the video Game Grumps guy on white supremacy. I think that's his claim to fame in, pol uh, in, in, in politics. Autodidactism is good. This guy's just an ego, ego tech. Oh, there's nothing wrong with self-educating. I self-educate. We all should be self-educating every single day. It's part of being an adult. But somebody asked me his credentials, so I just explained his biography. Did I, did I leave anything out, Destiny fans? He debated Sargon on trans people. Oh, okay, good. That's another, another big debate. Sargon of Akkad. Good job. And Lauren Southern on demographic change and immigration. So he debated a bunch of internet right-wing personalities who are really stupid and on really easy debate points. You're giving him too much credit. Autodadax can be legit. Actually, read D just reads Wikipedia pages for the first thing that comes up on Google to justify his biases. Okay, you're probably right. Can we use the term cried out instead of debated? Well, I mean, I'm trying to be fair, right? Did I ever debate Sargon of Akkad? No, I didn't. Most known for his Pokemane drama. It's the Pokemane drama... Which, by the way, he totally lied about Pokemon. It turned out everything he said about her was wrong. So he kind of enjoyed the uh, Gamergate incel, you know, tears uh, attacking Pokemon. That was pretty fucked up. So I think we're pretty much set up. I think he started, became um, angry. People thought he was a leftist because he held some socially progressive. I think he got angry at like Hassan for Hassan's growth. And then me for my growth, you know, and other personal things. And so he, he kind of launched on this crusade uh, against us and all leftists. And it was over the dumbest ass shit. So, uh, you know, I, I think then he got on this like anti-left arc of just like crusading against every, every left-wing politician and every left-wing. I think he called AOC economically illiterate because she said that we should regulate open market stock buybacks by supporting a bill written by Chuck Schumer. And, uh... It's mainstream economics that open market stock buybacks are bad, including the Obama's SEC chair, who said that open market stock buybacks are terrible and distort companies uh, uh, and are, are undermining America's competitiveness. Also, Warren Buffett said that. So, like, he called AOC economically illiterate for a position shared by Warren Buffett, Chuck Schuber, and Obama's SEC chair. Uh, and then he called, Ob he called Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All policy the Fifth Reich of healthcare. And so he got launched in these like very weird anti-left arc that he's been focused, he's been obsessed with since 2019. And then we all, we all know about the N-word Andy and the Kyle Rittenhouse defense stuff. His pokey drama content is his second most viewed video after a questionable video titled CSGO Alu Akbar. My goodness. No wonder he was uh, departnered from Twitch. We do politics here every morning starting at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. You can watch us here on Twitch. We're the morning guy, the morning politics guy, politics frogs in every single day, same time, 10 a.m., day in, day out. And we carry you through your morning and early afternoon politics needs. And if you need more, Mike from PA, we have a YouTube channel. We talked about suburbs, the My Pillow guy. 
Ted Cruz. We talked about DSA. Amazing. Making fun of Tim Pool. Amazing. Look at all of these amazing videos. Get in there, watch them. We have me on Twitter. You got to follow me on Twitter, chat. I'm at 20,614 subs. That means I got like 40 followers on Twitter in the last day. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Go follow us on Twitter. And of course, join the Discord, where we have an incredible community of left-wing streamers. We have left-wing community. We talk about the stream. We talk about politics. There's gaming content. It's a really awesome, supportive place. Direct action, mutual aid. And you can just let off some steam. And also, you can help produce the show. One of the things I do is I look at the links that are put into the news content suggest suggestions chat room on the Discord. Join the Discord, come hang out, and uh, maybe what you want me to talk about will be part of the next show.